From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. A production of iHeartRadio. Hello, welcome back to the show. My name is Matt. My name is Noel. They call me Ben. We're joined, as always, with our super producer, Paul, Mission Control Deck, and most importantly, you are you, you are here, and that makes this the stuff they don't want you to know. If you are like most people, fellow conspiracy realists, you you probably thought about UFOs. As a matter of fact, if you're like 65% of Americans, you're convinced that somewhere out there in that big old universe, there are aliens. You just, you don't know whether or not they visited Earth, and... Honestly, these days, even if you're a more skeptical person, you have also heard tales of strange things in the sky. So uh, basically, you know, everybody remembers uh, during the pandemic, the world's most powerful military actually came out and slickly said, hey, uh, there's stuff going on. We don't know. And everybody was like, "Ah, yeah, you know, figures this. Of course, this would be the time you say that. Uh, And When we ask, what is up there? What's really going on? That's the question at the heart of our pal Payne Lindsay's newest podcast. So to learn more, we decided to go straight to the man, the myth, the legend himself, fellow conspiracy realist. Please welcome back to the show, the award-winning filmmaker, director, podcast creator, also a a dear friend of ours, Payne Lindsay. Payne, thanks for hopping on, man. Thank you guys. How y'all doing? Doing good. Ready to hop aboard the Payne train. (laughs) <laughs> you better be. You better be. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're just really, we're really excited about this topic in particular. We're excited about your new show, High Strange Pain. Uh, uh, a little behind the scenes, like you may have sent me a few things about this in the past. And my goodness, dude, I can't tell you how excited I was every time you'd send a little snippet of somebody that actually had a UFO UAP sighting and they're just telling their story. Oh, Y'all, you have no idea. This show sounds amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I, I loved sending you little little nuggets like that. I was like, who would care the most in my phone? <laughs> Matt would love this. And you actually did. And I was like, okay, cool. Does it sound okay? Is it, am I doing good? <laughs> well, it's, it's hard to judge with me sometimes, Payne, because this topic just, it just, I don't know, it, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. Uh, b- there's so much wonder and awe. I think that exists in a lot of us when it comes to this kind of UFO UAP phenomena uh, and the, the possibilities, right? What could it be? So I guess let's get started. Let's talk about how High Strange began. Since I was a kid, I always liked the idea of aliens and UFOs more so in the sci-fi Steven Spielberg kind of way. But it was always just that, really. Just, you know, I bought like a little alien necklace on spring break. It was like this glow-in-the-dark little guy. Just stuff like that. I just thought it was cool and fun. And uh, a couple years ago, I was, you know, I've been doing true crime stories for, I mean, ever since I've made podcasts, right? So going on six years now. And all kind of investigative stuff. And I just kind of had the loose idea of what if I just kind of picked at the UFO subject right and it was really just kind of for fun didn't know what it was going to turn out to be and you know about a year and a half into doing it my whole viewpoint has like changed tremendously to wow it's like actually way more real than i thought it was like it's it's not even now it's like how do i deliver this message to the person who's like nah who doesn't want to go there right yeah and this is something that i think is tremendously refreshing and pretty important uh, to these sorts of stories because for, uh, let's be honest, for decades and decades, this stuff was dismissed, right? Uh, And it was dismissed out of hand. It became something fun you would see on the X-Files or Twilight Zone. But you have, um, you've done something really interesting by taking a uh, fact versus fiction approach, right? By like having a balanced conversation about a topic that's really controversial to people. So how would you describe high strange to someone who doesn't know much about UFOs? I mean, the reality is we all know what the term UFO 
stands for. And we all kind of know the connotation that comes with that. It's when you say UFO, even though it means unidentified flying object, you mean like a spaceship, right? That's basically what it's become. Um, so everyone knows what that is. It's made its mark in pop culture. And there are stuff that's happened. And if you just look at the news, that doesn't feel very explained. The doors still kind of open all of that stuff, even if you're a total skeptic. So I just basically, I'm just, all I'm doing is posing the question quite literally, what's up with these UFOs? And I don't really have an agenda other than trying to actually figure it out. And that comes with me talking to uh, people who've had unreal firsthand experiences that, you know, I present to you and it's all for you to decide. And I pick it kind of both ends of it. But if you listen through the whole series, it starts to kind of become like, well, I, it's, hard, it's becoming harder to just blindly dismiss all of this as a whole. And I think that that's the actual reality. And so if you're just willing to have an open mind and literally just press play. Um, and I, I actually say that at the end of the episode, I'm like, or the, my first monologue in the show, I'm like, all you have to do is listen. And it's like, it's true, right? And I'll, I'll hold your hand along the way a little bit, and I won't offend the people who are, oh, I know all this stuff. That's fine, too. But um, yeah, it's like, how do I get my mom to listen to this and actually take it seriously, right? Um, so there's a little bit of that going on in there. I want to take you back to 2018. You're spending a lot of time in Colorado. You're investigating Crystal Ann Reisinger's case for Up and Vanish Season 2. You are, I guess, maybe it's the first time you head out towards Crestone, and I'm assuming you probably saw the watchtower, the UFO watchtower when you're traveling out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell us about encountering that watchtower, meeting Candace, who ran the place, and then like, did, did you experience anything out there? Did you feel anything out there? Did it have anything to do with you wanting to make High Strange? So it's funny because, and I, and I never said this publicly, but I'll, I'll just say it now because it's been long enough. But, you know, my uncle actually lives in Crestone and he's lived there for like 25 years now. He's like one of the OG guys. And I, you know, he asked me not to like tell anybody at the time when we were doing the podcast. And he was also kind of like my my mole, really, yeah, yeah. like in the town. Um, so I was familiar with, you know, he had, he had talked about this UFO watchtower and weird stuff he's seen out there. And so obviously it was one of the first places I wanted to go was like, I'm going to go check out this watchtower. And it's it's really cool. It's a, it's a, a really cool vibe there. All these little trinkets and stuff in the, the holy yard they have there. But the only like real kind of weird thing I experienced there was, and, and I, I go there again in, in High Strange, is there's a certain point um, like in the yard where it makes your compass kind of go all weird. And I didn't even have like an actual compass at the time. I, I just had to use my phone, but it still did it on the phone. It would just, you know, north is this way, you find it, and you start walking this way, and it just starts spinning around. So there's, there, there's something magnetically or whatever is happening right there. You know, is it aliens? Probably not. But there's something going on, and they haven't been able to explain that one yet, so I don't know. But it was weird. It was fun. I've heard that referred to as an energy vortex, and I think Candace that's what they mentions said. That's what she said, in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, the magnetic field anomaly. Dude, that's what okay. people call me. I'm, they call me an energy vortex. You know, I just I <laughs> okay. suck up all, all the energy in the room. room. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere, I, everywhere I go. Uh, I have a quick question. We're saying UFO, which I know is the sexier term, but uh, it seems that there's some revisionist history going on in terms of the government now coining this less sexy term UAP. And in the reporting around a lot of this stuff, you know, we see it, there's a choice as to which one people use UAP or UFO, depending on the nature of the story. Um, and I see that you're using UFO and I fully support that. But what are your thoughts on, you know, rebranding this phenomenon in that way? I mean, it's probably overall a good thing. I think that because there's such a stigma with the word UFO, if you're actually trying to conduct scientific studies about things in the sky that you can't explain that are unknown crafts, then maybe the UFO term needed to be updated for that reason alone. But I, I, I yeah, obviously, I, I say UAP or UFO a lot in High Strange, and I honestly, I just ran with UFO. And so I've, I've always known it is that UAP is like the PC version of that or something. It's like the, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it's like the nerds version. It's like, okay, but like, you mean UFOs though, right? <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's a hundred percent. I mean, you can make a good argument by saying, okay, not everything might be a physical, tangible object. So UAP, but I feel like if we're being honest, the real reason Uncle Sam has gone with UAP is because they felt like people wouldn't take them seriously. If they came out and they said, hey, you know, we uh, we know we spend millions and millions of your dollars. Some of it goes to UFOs. That's just where we're at right now. So they had to, like, class it up a little bit. I have a theory about that, Ben. Mm -hmm. I, do you think it could be about search engine optimization? So when people uh, are could, searching could, for yeah. UAP, like, they, it's almost like being being able to change the way people think about a thing by down the line. It's like a long a long tail uh, change in how people, when they yeah. search for things, right? You won't Paradigm find a lot shift. of the old UFO content. You'll find the newer UAP stuff, and it's almost like you could control the narrative a little it's more. It's like Facebook. That sounds kind of lame. Meta? That sounds kind of cool. <laughs> right? right? Same thing. Or Frozen. The yeah, Disney yeah. Frozen theory. The Google Jury's and Alphabet? On that one. I, I like I, I see that it feels like it might be kind of an add on effect, though, because a lot of the scientists, this is something um, a high strange addresses too. a lot of the, the scientists, the subject matter experts, the pilots who have, you know, actual video, a lot of them, from our understanding, uh, were just kind of omerta about this stuff and didn't say anything for a while. Did you run into people who had been hesitant to talk in the past or like oh, what yeah. kind of folks did you meet? Yeah, man, I met this one guy. He, um, he actually is featured in the last episode. Uh, his name is Kevin Day. He was a, a radar specialist uh, in 2004, this USS Nimitz incident. And, um, you know, he, he for several days saw these Tic Tac shaped objects on his radar, basically just running circles around the F-18s. And he's like, eventually went to work the next day. I was like, I got to tell somebody about this. This is like a, a legitimate safety of flight issue. And he was basically just kind of laughed off. And he, he was so upset about it that he actually ended up retiring as a result of that. And then it wasn't until 13 years later and uh, like... 2017 when the the news broke that oh yeah that thing that you were experiencing yeah like that did happen and he just you know they just gaslit him for 13 years and now he's you know just full steam ahead on trying to you know tell his story and encourage other people in the military who've experienced something like that to come out and talk openly about it it's really important that that's a radar specialist, not mm -hmm. just a pilot who, you know, visually saw something. That's somebody using highly sophisticated technological equipment that observed some stuff in the air. Also, I love that you said just a pilot. Well, I no, like, I, I, that's not what I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean <laughs> I to talk down to any pilots. With, with, yeah, Often no, the stories I, that you hear and that we get to uh, learn about are the personal experience, somebody's eyes seeing right. something right and it's an individual often every once in a while you'll have a shared experience you know a couple of different planes in the sky saw the same thing and they can corroborate but when you've got that that radar data as well to back up the claims like the nimitz incident it's just so so much stronger from a scientific Absolutely. perspective yeah it, what, what to me what makes the story compelling is i mean obviously anybody can see something in the sky and as we all know, and, and I know especially even in true crime, you know, witness testimony isn't always that reliable, right? So, if you, you know, maybe you did see that, but maybe you actually didn't see that. But if you have 100 people who saw that and you have this radar stuff and you have this over here in this video, now it's now you're having to search for ways that it didn't actually happen. And, yeah. you know, it, all those bases are covered. So now it's to me, that's a story now. That's a. Uh, worth exploring and is there a hole or is this are we just definitively like in the, if this was the court of law would the jury just say yep that happened probably right yeah and that's i mean that point about the data that's one of the the huge things to go I into right because the the radar at this point is not going to have an opinion Right. And it's not going to have a, a, a weird memory trick that can be leveraged by someone. But it, it feels like a lot of times 
for many years, uh, especially in the case of uh, the Tic Tac Nimitz stuff we're mentioning, it feels like a lot of times people were approaching this not with an open mind, like you ask of listeners in High Strange, but more like a um, uh, kind of how do we how do we debunk this? You know, like let's let's find a way to object to this observer's character, or let's find an alternate explanation, even if that explanation is tenuous at best. Uh, did you feel okay? I've got this kind of a behind the scenes or behind the UFO question. Uh, did you ever talk to folks who felt like a little cagey or hard to get to? And uh, if if so. How how did you go about kind of like building a rapport where they could trust and open up with you? Yeah, there was a there's a couple. So I mean, really, when I first started this, I wanted to search and find the absolute most compelling UFO stories in modern American history. Right, the ones that have that have, are still to this day not easily debunked. And they're still alive. And I also wanted to find stuff that had audio tape to go with it as a as a podcast, you know, that would kind of like support whatever story they were telling. So there's two really big stories that I go through in the first four episodes. It's the Travis Walton abduction and the Rendlesham Forest incident. And um, Travis Walton is a guy I, I reached out to on Facebook like two years ago. I don't even know if he checks his Facebook. I don't know what's going on, but it was never read. I can't. The guy's a ghost. I couldn't find anything online. And I'm like, this is impossible. Um, and then I, I met a guy um, who's a friend of mine now, and he's just kind of into this topic and likes weird stuff like we do. And I was telling him about telling him about High Strange, and he, he's like, have you talked to Travis Walton? I was like, no, I've been trying to. He's he knew him for whatever reason. And he, w- without him, I would have never been able to talk to Travis. And even when I finally got there, and, and you'll hear it if you listen to the first episode, I, I flew all the way out there to Snowflake, Arizona. We're good to go. And then dude's flaking. He, he's several hours late. And I'm like, what's going on? And then he all of a sudden just pulls up in his truck and he sits in his car for like 10 straight minutes. And I'm like, what is he doing? Is he prepping his story? Is he... Is he nervous? Is he? Uh, is it traumatic? And eventually, I, I finally sat down with him, and he was a little. I wouldn't say cagey. I would just say he, he seemed tired, right? Like he's told this his whole life, and you know it's new to me. But I could just tell that, regardless, Travis Walton believes his story, and always has. And there's seven witnesses to go with it. The dude was really missing for five days. The His friends were almost charged with murder. It's like, it, if it wasn't a UFO abduction that happened, then what was it then? And maybe there is, it was something else, but no one's been able to figure that out either. And that could arguably sound crazier. I remember with Travis Walton, he, he was like the most believable person when it came to an abduction story for a long time. And then years back, he went on some show where they made him do a lie detector test, like live. And in he got he passed everything until like the very last question. And the poor guy is sitting there on TV with all these producers around him, like being told, oh, no, you're lying. You know, he mentioned to me like off record or offhand that that was totally like a setup that was not like they totally it was a gotcha thing kind of. Well, yeah, but also like we know lie detectors are, you know, fallible in and of themselves. And then not to mention if you're in a high pressure situation and you're you're you're, you know, responding to that kind of, you know, uh, stress, those stressors. Probably not going to be an accurate read, even though we already know the thing's probably not accurate a lot of the time. Polygraphs are funny, though, because, you know, all the witnesses took polygraph tests and they all passed except for one guy was inconclusive and it was merely because he was super stressed and nervous. Now, had they all failed, then you would be using that to support your argument. A million percent. But if they pass, it's like, well, it's just a polygraph. It's like, yeah, but it's one box that's checked. Had they all failed it, then you'd be looking at it differently. So it's just like a, a tool of, I mean, is it a coincidence that they all passed? Maybe, but that's a that's a weird one t- to go with everything else. That's it's a weird. way to narrow things down to a certain degree, yeah, exactly. at the very least. Yeah, 
I like that you said tool because that's what it, a polygraph at its best is a diagnostic tool, but it is a tool that requires an interpreter, the proctor, mm-hmm. the person who administers that and their motivations and this is, I'm not like paying a broad brush. Uh, nobody go out there and like start hating on polygraph folks. But because it's a human operating the machine, that human's own perspective, consciously or not, can interfere with uh, with the way they conduct a test. And, and I love the point you're making about perspective there, because then you kind of learn more about the uh, the person objecting, right, than you do about the facts. And it's nuts that you spoke with Walton. Um, it pre- I, I think it speaks um, volumes about both the amount of uh, work you're putting into the show and uh, your your abilities to build, you know, that kind of safe space with a person. Did you uh, – d- have you contacted any uh, – Men in black? That's a question people want us to ask. Or have they contacted you? Have they come to you? (laughs) I I, I joke around with uh, my buddy Mike, who worked on the show with me, too. Um, I was like, if I came to the office tomorrow and I was like, hey, dude, like, I, I, come here. I'm like, I'm like, come to my house. And I go to my house, like, take him upstairs, and I turn the shower on, and I'm like, there's men in black following me. I was like, would you believe me? He's like, hell, hell yeah, I'd believe you. <laughs> I was like, dude. So, yeah, part of me kind of like, that'd be super uh, fun if they thought I was that important. Um, but then I also, w- w- would it be scary? But I was also like, what are you going to do? Or or am I just going to disappear, actually? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but no contact yet. Um, still waiting for them to get back to me. Mm, they're busy. They're busy. They're busy. Yeah, they got <laughs> other podcasters to harass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have that meeting at a park though next time. Just say, hey, we should go for a walk and have it at a park because, dude, your your house is totally bugged. I mean, that's like right come on. at this point, it's bugged. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on. <laughs> but I was like, my method was like, if, if I have the shower going, and it's like, hey, can you, like it, it, it'd be hard to pick that up. Like, how great is your audio equipment? It's parks, so I would argue that all parks are bugged too. <laughs> Every park bench yeah. is a listening yeah. device, so tread lightly there. <laughs> Think too, about my it. Yeah. Also, also, I love the idea that we turn on the shower and then somebody at the NSA is going, "Ah, f- we got to figure out a shower filter." <laughs> it's a you know, like, ah, like it hurts his ears. He's like, yeah. Ah. And also, until that moment, Mike's like, or, "What are we about to do, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> that that's all. What kind of music is playing when the shower <laughs> goes on? But this, I mean, you know, we're joking about that. Um, but that is a that is a legitimate concern that a lot of the people you've spoken with have had. You know, am I being followed? Will there be consequences for my career? And it sounds like several of the people you talked to who worked in government. We're not only fearful of that, but they they had encountered this stuff. And okay, like people in government, men and black aside, uh, that that you have spoken with, did you get a sense that their overall perspective is changing or evolving, kind of like yours does throughout the show? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that the smarter ones are already there. You know, they they're they know that something is real. I think different people know different little pieces to the puzzle, but um, yeah, the the smart, intelligent people in the government know know that whether they know literally, they just know that yeah, that's what the rumblings are about. Like it's not a, it's not a kooky thing anymore. It's a thing. And I think like in the fifties, there was I think there was sort of a you know I mean misinformation campaign and, you know, stuff like that with Project Blue Book and all that kind of stuff. Um, So I think that was a threat to some people back then. I I think that's gone now. I think it's, you know, I don't think that anyone's going to knock on my door because there's there's people in Congress saying crazier things about this than I am. We're going to pause for a word from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with High Strange and Payne Lindsay. And we've returned. Let's get into it. We know for sure that as technology was developing pretty rapidly after nuclear technology came around, the U.S. government is, you know, and the CIA, uh, they're working directly with private companies, contractors to build 
just insane technology that ended up becoming the SR-71 or, you know, stealth bombers and technology like that. Uh, even just the the original spy plane. What was that one called, Ben? The the first big spy plane. Uh, uh, are you talking about the U-2? Are you talking yeah, about... the U-2. The U-2. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, so that stuff's actually being developed in secret out in the desert, right? And then the U.S. government appears to have used the UFO thing as potentially a cover. Oh, people are seeing stuff in the sky. Well, sure. We'll investigate those sightings and we'll combine it all in things like blue book and project grudge and all those things. I think it just got out of hand. Actually. I think, I think that was like, it was, it was, it was to protect the country at the time. Yeah. Whether it was the, whether it was, you know, the right thing to do, that's a different question. Yeah. I think it just got out of hand where it, it just, and I bet people who knew stuff that was really important just died with that information. <laughs> do you think anything that could be happening like that now? So like just super advanced technology that's being developed by the U S government or some totally. other government. And this is just like, we're just seeing it. I mean, that's, that's 100% a possibility. I mean, it's, you can, and I, it may, it may not explain them all either. It, uh, it, they could all be true. Uh, and it's probably a, a little bit of everything. Um, but it makes you wonder if the government comes out and releases this video, this fuzzy black and white video, and says, we don't know what that is. Either they're lying, um, and it, uh, but why even draw attention to it? Or they just actually don't know. I, I don't like to give the government too much credit, so I think they just don't know. <laughs> Which is nuts, right? I learned about that, and I, <laughs> I you know, we've been... We've been doing this show for, for quite some time, so we have a lot of people who will approach us in our personal lives about stuff. And as soon as this news hits, you know, our group chat goes nuts. And uh, and then we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got people who are kind of, again, putting their own perspective and spin on this. I had, I had an uncle who just sent me a clip of the Tic Tac thing and then a quote that says, they don't know. And he goes... What am I paying taxes for? And I was like, great. That's that's such a, a weird good point. I know it's a good point, but I'm like, why why do you make everything about your weird beliefs? <laughs> you know? But uh right. but this so like I, I want to go back to this evolution that you experience, right? So uh, we're getting the sense that at the beginning, um you're like many Many people of our generation, I love science fiction, right? And it's a cool idea, but let's be realistic, right? Let's exercise critical thought. So were there, were there like crossroad moments or pivotal moments that gave you like the epiphany where you thought, crap, this is real? Was it, was it seeing video and having your background as a filmmaker? Was it a particularly persuasive interview? Like, it, do you have those moments where you started to kind of? Yeah, it was a culmination of of a bunch of things. Um, you know, Travis Walton was actually the first interview I, I did for the entire podcast. That was like almost a year and a half ago that I did that now. And his story is so, I mean, just unbelievable, right? It's just like, who has a story like that? Right? He's one of few people who has a story like that. Um, and so it was going back through the tape and kind of, piecing it all together and putting it, you know, in an episode and then going and doing like all the due diligence of digging up all the old tape. And I, I found like phone calls that like when cause he was missing for five days. So I found like tape phone calls of like his brother trying to find him. And, and like that totally just shifted the perspective, like going back and hearing people talk about this in 1975 it just kind of shifts things a little bit that's that's a long time ago <laughs> you know i was born in 87 so but they they were concerned so something was going on that was totally real whatever it was and just kind of hearing how real that was and and then going and, and exploring the Reynoldsham story and then even kind of digging at the Roswell incident a little bit because um, that's one where it's like, oh, yeah, Roswell. Yeah, uh, it's like that's an easy one. I mean, I've been there and it's like, welcome to Roswell and there are aliens everywhere. And it's, you know, there's an alien themed McDonald's and and I ate there and it was awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quarter pounder. And it was it was the same, but it was still good. 
It's like when you go to Orlando, everything's like Disney-fied around it. Even like the <laughs> right. crappy hotels look like magical castles and stuff. It's like, I, I love seeing <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. But yeah, it was a culmination of all those things. And I kind of eventually, like the same tape I've been listening to as I'm building the story, I just had like a moment one day where I was like, holy shit, man, this is way more real. I, I just like, I didn't know when I just totally flipped the switch, but I just had realized that I had. And I felt a different sort of uh, motivation to tell the story, um, knowing that it was real. Like once I got to the point where I knew it was real, it's like if I knew this guy killed this person, I know that, then how do I, that, what do I do now? So I'm like, I know this is real. So how do I present that? Also, there was a photo that came out that really kind of, you know, to me, I think it's the best one ever. It's the, is it the Calvine yes. UFO yeah. photo? Yeah. I yeah. think all, the older stuff to me is the most legit because there's too many things you can do now. But an old picture taking taken on Kodak film that Kodak can confirm is real and original pre Photoshop pre everything that you could do to doctor it then what the hell is it <laughs> right yeah. right when we ask all those questions it's funny you say because we were kind of um I, I often lean on uh, uh Matt and Noel's expertise in the world of audio and video and uh and even like I just pulled it up now and it's it's um cognitively it's it's almost a maze, right? Because you gotta eliminate all these possibilities. What if it's a balloon? And then come to five, fast forward, it's 2023, and balloons still scare the shit out of everyone, just depending yeah. on how they get there, right? <laughs> we fire four hundred thousand dollar missiles at them. Uh so so this thing, let's let's stick let's stick to the shape and like physical attributes of the things go. that we're seeing, right? So if we're looking at this Calvin UFO photograph, it's almost a diamond looking shaped thing uh, that's in the sky, appears to be just hovering there or just floating there. It's a still image, right? That's what you get. Uh, we think about the Tic Tac video and the shape of those things. How, how have people described the size and shape of these craft to you? I mean, there is a tremendous variation. And, and this is where it becomes, if you're, if you don't want to go there, then this will be something that you just hang your hat on as, uh, like, see, th the thing is, it's not all one thing. There are 10 trillion galaxies, right? We're just now seeing another one. An one. Another one. <laughs> and so the likelihood of life is, is it's, impossible for it not to exist, right? And so if if that is the case, and if anything at all is coming to Earth from places so far away that you literally can't see them with our most advanced telescopes, then they're incredibly more advanced than us, and they're not flying around in things that work the same way that our machines work. And the point I'm getting to is that it's not like they're all coming from Mars, Right. And they're aliens, and that's what they... It's not... It's probably so many things that it's terrifyingly large. Like, it's probably so many different things. But there's there's the classic tic-tac-shaped object, um, and you can go back and find stories about those back in the 30s and 40s. And there's the classic metallic disc, right? And then there's other weird stuff that doesn't really make sense, like these, like, pod things and capsule stuff. I mean, I think there's probably a mix of, you know, unmanned drones that aren't from, like, that are just AI-driven that aren't from Earth, <laughs> and then actual crafts that may have, you know, occupants in them. Oh, and with that, we're going to take a quick break, hear a word from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. <laughs> And we've returned with more from Mr. Payne Lindsay. I want to describe really fast, guys. Just want to describe the way this person, Ryan Graves, a former Navy uh, fighter pilot and an engineer, described one of these things. Just because I'd never heard it before. And I've, you, you mentioned like a capsule kind of thing. And I think that's close to how he's describing it. Uh, he He's quoted writing for Politico on February 28th of this year saying that he experienced seeing a dark gray cube inside a clear sphere. 
<gasps> the board was just floating motionless in the sky. <laughs> and his his I, I don't know if it was an F eighteen or what he was flying in, but he and another pilot flew right past it and almost hit the thing. So I talked to Ryan Graves in the show. Actually, um, I, I talked to Ryan, and he when he told he, the same description. It's like that also got to me. It, it like bothered me a little bit. I'm yeah. like, ew, what? <laughs> it's like it's not like the traditional like you almost want it to be like a a flying saucer, right? It's the friendlier thing. Um, but that's like a that's a we just we don't know what that is. Like <laughs> that that may not be. We we just don't know what it is. It's it's probably it doesn't sound like a craft. Actually, it could be, or maybe it is. I don't know. It's like, what the hell is that? That's definitely not something that China has. Like, what what is that? The way I, the way I thought about it in my head was a, that cube or something that is exerting some kind of sphere around it that manipulates uh, maybe space time creates Dimension a bubble or in yeah. which it can operate. Right. That that's in my head. But you know, of course, yeah, like that's that, speculation. That, yeah. That's a good hypothesis, actually. I mean, yeah. I mean, based on the information we have, yeah, right, <laughs> which is little to zero, right? Yeah, yeah. But this, um, so this is a this is a great point you're bringing up, uh, and something we should just spend a little time with the idea, uh, like the idea that there would be variation in size and description and motion and so on. Um, to some who consider themselves on the skeptical side, that just means that. People are seeing weird weather cloud formations, or I guess they don't know what a bird looks like, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. <laughs> but this, like, birds aren't real. Just sorry, <laughs> putting that right. That's the that's the heart of the conspiracy. That's what um, we're getting at, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we spoiled the last episode of High yeah, Strange. That's where I. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but the thing about this variation of shape, I think it speaks to something that that you brought up earlier pain, which is the idea that there is, there are multiple, not just plausible, not just valid, but there are probably multiple real explanations for some of these things. Would you, if you could like categorize what you think some of those explanations are, like if you had a list of what those would be, what are they? I would say that for the most compelling stories or videos, whatever they are, if the, if it's not a doctored thing, if it's like, if it's real, then it's either some advanced military craft that we don't know about. It could be an adversary. Um, and if it's not those things, then it is, you know, barring some weird optical illusion, which those do happen. But if it's not, if it's an actual craft or object, then it's, it has to be from somewhere else. I think the somewhere part of that is can be expanded on a little bit. I don't think that has to mean that they're from some other, you know, they're from Pluto. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it could be uh, another dimension. You know, uh, people have speculated, is it us in the future? Or, you know, I, I'm I'm less on that theory. But to me, it's like they're from somewhere else. And the way I like to think about it is the universe is so big that they're probably just from some other galaxy. And if you're that advanced, then you wouldn't care about us, really. Like, you wouldn't, like, we're not a threat to you. I I, I go this little silly monologue in one of my episodes where it's like, if you go walk around in the woods, do you ever just, like, stop and look at a pile of ants and, and talk to it, right? And All I was like, unless you're on shrooms. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. well, no comment. You, you, you get in situations, Chef. You don't really care. You're, you're not going to step on the ant pile either unless you're an asshole, right? Or unless you're, you're threatened. Kind of let it be. You can observe it, but it's just kind of a... I mean, we have zoos here <laughs> with, you know, animals that are smart, and we just watch them. And, you know, we're there... Boss, <laughs> isn't isn't we, that yeah. like a classic uh, Twilight Zone trope, Ben? Where like we are the zoo, you know? Yeah, yeah. There is, and also to, th- to this point too. Uh, uh, let's let's have that thought experiment. I I love the note about ants. It makes it more understandable, I believe, for people. But uh, and, and we do know, like Forbes recently came out reporting that the Pentagon and a Harvard astronomer teamed up. And they said, hey, some of these things we're seeing, we're not saying they're aliens, but they're not obeying 
physics as we know it. Whatever they're doing, it's some kind of like super parkour that shouldn't exist. Uh, with that in mind, like to understand this stuff through analogy, I think is a powerful thing. So let's say, think of the Atlanta Zoo. What we got in the Atlanta Zoo? We've got all kinds of animals. What if, what if one of the animals escapes the zoo, makes it back to the wild, and then and they're saying, "Hey, where were you for five years?" And they say, "Like, oh, I I got abducted." And I got, there's this place they take you and they do weird things to you. And, you know, I'm now that's I'm back. Right. That's a, that's a familiar concept. Right. So I, I mean, it's something to think about. But here's also this too, though. Like if, if a zebra escapes the zoo, we always get that zebra back. Right? That's true. <laughs> that zebra it, it, doesn't like, start a new life. No. Yeah. And so it's like, if you're a, an alien in a spaceship and you come here you just go, cool, bye. What are you going to do? Like, chase me out of here? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't even leave, you know, your solar system, so. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you, you also mentioned that, like, you know, if we're walking in the woods, we wouldn't necessarily mess with the ant pile. But then you do have the odd, like, psychopathic kid that likes to burn ants with a magnifying glass. Uh, totally. Or, like, frat boys that like to steal animals from the zoo, you know, for pranks. <laughs> I'm just, you know, there could certainly be situations. And there could be, like, some going on with you know some other alien race I, I, I but i feel like you know the concept of like evil and all that kind of thing is i think the more intelligent we become as a species i i would like to hope and think that it you know stuff like racism goes away because we're just smarter because that's it's not stupid. pragmatic it, it, it doesn't make sense you know you could have um, ill intent um, but I think that as a whole, it's just like, unless you're just, you know, you're trying to just blow some shit up, then well, there's no advantage or point to doing any of that. But see, I think about animal testing, right? And and I think right. about the hor horrific things that brilliant people do to rabbits and mice right now, you know, to in order for a greater good, right? So I do wonder if there's something like that could be happening. Yeah, it's totally possible. Well, also, we recently did like kind of uh, it was a listener that wrote in and did an experiment with chat GPT where they figured out a loophole of getting it to say stuff that it normally would be on guardrails not to say by creating this uh, hypothetical kind of role playing fantasy, you know, Dungeons and Dragons thing. They play D&D. &D. That's exactly right. <laughs> and then chat GPT, essentially, the asked chat GPT through this, you know, kind of like a little little loophole. Why? What, what would be the circumstances that would lead to AI wanting to take? over the world and the answer was like you know it wasn't about malevolence or destruction it was about creating a more functioning society and in order to do that it might require eliminating human beings but that optimizing could, the universe right, right. optimizing yeah. the universe fits into that. that's all i'm saying never you know? explains and and that's the thing too because one of the big questions that that comes up here and it's kind of big and abstract is um is the just obsessive, self-centered nature of humanity, right? The only life forms that we know about officially are on Earth. The only, um, the only experiences we speak to are things like us, you know. Uh, and so we are very um, limited. Society is very limited in its understanding of things like the totality of uh, what's possible in the universe, right? And what, what could be defined as life or even a craft, you know? And I, I've got to, I've got to ask what's some of the most out there stuff you heard while you spent years researching this? Is, is there anything that like didn't make it into the show because it was just a, a bridge too far? I, there's definitely some stories that we kind of tabled, um, <laughs> uh, that we'll probably put in season two once everyone's warmed up. Um, but I mean, I'll just say, I mean, I, I, I'm like 98% done with the show and I was kind of going through some stuff yesterday. And, uh, if you're familiar with the, the Betty and Barney Hill incident, yes. oh, yeah, yeah. um, and it has some really compelling audio tape to go with it and it's just harrowing. It's like trigger warning type stuff. And is that the hypnotic thing the yeah, regression yeah. The, the regression therapy sessions and it's also it's just it's so real because it happened in 1963 
And before that, there had never been an abduction story like in America. And so what they described was this craft that made no noise and this time loss, all these things that are themes uh, with those kinds of stories today. So you could either say that they all got it from this and they they made that up or it just kind of started here or but they were the first to kind of put that on record and where did they get that from right or did it just happen and that one kind of spooked me and it's weird it's the alien abduction ones that are uh really out there and like the experimentation stuff and um you know there's all kind of weird stories i mean there's one guy in uh france and i mean i think it was like 40 years ago or something, but these aliens just f***ed him up. <laughs> like, they always went there and just like, killed his dog, like, d- did <laughs> messed up stuff, just like, f***ed his shit up. <laughs> wow. And, you know, other people saw stuff, but it's like a one of those, uh, oh, well, maybe there are some souls f- out there, right? That maybe there are, just- like, the extraterrestrial equivalent of dumb, dumb teens or joyriders. Oh, yeah. And they, like, Took took their parents uh, space Cadillac or whatever, and they're like, ah, "We're gonna have well, some that fun actually gets tonight. to another point I like to bring up because people, you know, with the stories of like crashed spaceships, you know, it's easy to say, well, if they're so advanced, you know, why why are they crashing? I was like, that's a good point, but you know, what if Roswell was just literally two drunk teenagers, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like who were like, oh no. We we messed up bad, <laughs> and then it was yeah. like too late. Like it was it was bad. They did not they did not want to be here. That There's was not an episode the plan. of uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force where there are these obnoxious teenage aliens that are always talking about how their dad owns a dealership, and you know they, they come down and like wreck shop. <laughs> I need Aqua that. Teens. That sounds hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really funny, guys. and it's it's totally the scenario you're describing. Just kind of like you know as a cynic that is cartoon. amazing. Just open the hatch. Yeah. We, <laughs> we just can't out. ascribe motive. That's the that's the issue. Like, uh, you know, there was a story making the rounds uh several months, years ago, I can't remember, uh, where you have someone very authoritatively saying, Well, the octopus is probably the closest thing there is to an alien, and we have a lot to learn. And uh yeah, the octopus is very different, but you can still understand the motivations of the animal, right? It wants to eat. It wants to reproduce. It's super cool at parties. I think if you catch it on the right night, but absolutely <laughs> like pain has partied with octopus before. Yeah. He's like like they're, they're really cool. <laughs> and so <laughs> They are really cool. Uh, so when we talk about the motivations here for these things, I think we also have to remember that anything the U S government, is saying about craft or phenomena, whatever they want us to call it, that they cannot identify, it's coming from the lens of national security, right? So they're not thinking, they're not really thinking past terms of, can this get past our defenses, right? Can this be a danger? Um, Do you have a sense of the future of these explorations? Like, what do you think this is a kind of a flash in the pan story? Is it building toward a larger social shift? Like, what's the future there? Um, And that's kind of what I got to when I had my little revelation myself, is that I believe that in our lifetime, I think in the next 50 years, that the, the fact that there is extraterrestrial life it will be just flat out common knowledge. And I think that we'll probably be at the point too where anytime that they have been here or come close or whatever, we'll know that that's happened. And I think it'll be a thing that we're still trying to figure out, but it'll be common knowledge. And so I like, I've looked at my, my show as I'm writing and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, I want this to be like a, in the grand scheme of things, if you zoom out, this was part part of that conver- conversation shift, right? It was part of getting people on board and being open-minded about what's probably going to be a reality. Um, 
no matter it's what. Way, I mean, it's the way any kind of sea change sort of happens. You know, it's a little bit slow at first, like with a trickle, and then it just kind of becomes. I mean, this isn't exactly a one to one, just sort of like the attitude toward like marijuana prohibition, for example. There was a time where people were just like cowering in fear of the police, you know, and now people are being released from prison, you know, for uh, marijuana sentences, and it's just becoming a much more like openly discussed and you know honest kind of part of society. And I think you know, well, they're not the same. The way that conversation changes, you know, is similar. I'm with yeah. you. Free the aliens. You know what I mean? <laughs> and get them high. Free high my strange. guy ET. Yeah. And then I got five on I've got five on whatever. Free him. Yeah, free him. Free ET. Well, because ultimately you got to change the way people think, right? That's I right. mean, hearts it's and minds. not easy. Well, they, have to, minds. they have to change it themselves. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. There has to be enough stuff out there that lets you feel like you could think that way, right? And so I, I've got to add here, folks, if you have somehow not listened to Payne's work before, uh, we're pretty selective about who we hang with and who we look toward. And this is not a uh, high strange is not the weekly world news. And it's not, you know, um, I, I there's not anything that feels like people are being exploited. It it really is an honest, balanced approach to the possibilities here. And this is something that I'm I'm very glad this exists in the world. Thank you for making this. Uh, but I, I feel like this is a great starting point for someone who has maybe they popped onto the wrong subreddit. And they saw these acronyms and all these names they didn't understand. And they were like, okay, forget about this. Right. So would, do, would you agree with that? Do you think this is a good way for people who are unfamiliar to start learning more? Absolutely. I mean, it's, that's what it, it really is designed for. It's designed for anyone who is curious about it. And we gather as much information and we have all this archive tape that you can listen to. You can hear the voices of the real people. You can know all the facts and you can kind of make up your own minds. And I, I also realized something throughout making this and it's for most people to be convinced of anything, right? How, how is anyone convinced of anything, right? Like I had this analogy of if a literal spaceship landed on the white house lawn today on live TV, and it was Fox News, CNN, everybody covering it, and got out and shook Biden's hand. Would you believe it then? Now, that would be very unbelievable, so you might be like, well, something's up. But regardless, it would be like, it'd be split up into people who are like, okay, like that's real, to no, there's something, big, something deeper going on. <laughs> There's be, something bigger. Yeah. It's part of some other thing. It's like COVID. It's like, yep, well, I guess you have to get COVID to know that it's real. <laughs> you got to get sick. I lose that smell and taste. And you're like, well, this does suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess you know? I guess there was <laughs> something to it after all. Uh, yeah, I, I love that, that point, too, in the age of ubiquitous media. It's tough because, okay, that example of the president shaking an extraterrestrial's hand live on video. Uh, we're all familiar with Twitter. I give it three minutes before someone comes up with a crazy in-depth conspiracy theory about how this is a cover-up for Atlantis or something. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, it's like it, if, it's, if that's not enough, then nothing is enough. You have to experience it yourself. And, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't even had one of those experiences like that where I... But if I did, all I could do is tell my story. You'd have to be there yourself to, to feel what I feel and know what I know, right? And with that, I think we we invite you to travel along with us uh, on High Strange, uh, the new podcast by Payne Lindsay with Tenderfoot and Cadence 13. Uh, and again, full disclosure, Matt, I think we have to shout this out. You and Payne work together extensively on past projects like the amazing Atlanta Monster uh, and Zodiac, uh, like the list goes on. Uh, I can't wait. I have not heard um, the entirety of this show, so I'm going to be riding along with our fellow conspiracy realist in this flying saucer of the mind. You don't understand. Uh, I haven't heard anything yet. I've heard snippets. <laughs> I've heard yeah. snippets. But okay. the first I episode is out right I'll now. I'll send you all the first three episodes today. Um, oh, I, I yeah. thought I had sent those, or, or someone sent those to you. Um, no, I'll send them to you. But you can listen right now. 
So just yeah, search you can for listen high to strength. it right now. Just go search it. Episode one is out. If you want to pay the five bucks, you can listen to it all now. If you don't, that's cool too. And this at this point, Payne, we have to we have to ask uh, for our listeners who want to find out more about you and your work, not just High Strange, but the rest of the OVA, uh, where can they find you online? My social media accounts are just my name, Payne Lindsay. Um, if you want to see people talking shit about me, you can go to Reddit. Um, <laughs> if you want to see weird quotes that are like out of context, go to my Wikipedia. And if you want the the real truth on me, uh, talk to my grandma. But actually, don't don't talk to her. Don't don't. Go to my <laughs> um, that is Payne Lindsay. Uh, if you follow me there, then you, you'll get all the stuff that I'm working on, the latest stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, what uh, what a ride on the pain train, mm-hmm. which is a UFO, reaction. which is a well, yeah. it's now it's an IFO because we identified this fly <laughs> this flying object. Uh, look, we you know we weren't we're not blowing smoke when we say that uh, we are at at this point we're pretty selective about folks that we want to bring in and speak with, uh, and this is. This is the kind of deep dive investigative stuff that I I think all three of us personally love. We hope you enjoy it, too. And we want to hear your thoughts on uh, UAPs, UFOs. Have you seen one? Have you been abducted? How did you get back? Uh, Was it was your experience like that SNL skit with uh, what's her name? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kate McKinnon. Uh I had a bit of a different experience. <laughs> I was, well, I don't think I was working with the top brass. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> my pooter we, and my cooter. Sorry. Right. That's what yes. she says. That's what yes. she says. I was, I was thinking that's of cool. Space Pants with Peter Dinklage. That's a that's another good SNL sketch. <laughs> so send us uh send us your tales, you know, send us your stories and let us know if you think you have isolated the cause. Of this, we actually received a lot of uh, correspondence from people online saying that the um, the surveillance balloon stories were a distraction. Honestly, I we don't think that that's the case at this point. It sounds like the U.S. government really did just figure out what they were supposed to be looking for in that case. But let us know. We can't wait to hear from you. We try to be easy to find online. That's right. You can find us on uh, social media um, at Conspiracy Stuff, uh, where we exist on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, Conspiracy Stuff Show, on Instagram and TikTok. If you don't like that stuff, call us. 1-833-STDWYTK. You've got three minutes. Give yourself a cool nickname and uh, say whatever you want. Just do please include whether or not we can put your name and voice in one of our listener mail episodes. If you don't like talking on the phone, well, you can also email us. We are conspiracy at iheartradio.com. Stuff They Don't Want You to Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.